It's KEXP, 90.3 FM in Seattle, KEXP.org online. Here for another edition of KEXP at Home, joined here with you, Sue, straight out of Vancouver, BC. Mm-hmm. And got this new record out, Yellow River Blue. Going to be sharing some songs from it. You're in Vancouver right now, but uh, originally from Kaifeng, China, correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's Yellow River out there. The home river. The home river. Sounds good. Going to get into a few songs from that. Let's hear it. KEXP.
KEXP 90.3 FM, KEXP.org online. Another edition of KEXP at home here. Just heard some songs from you, Sue. Thanks for those. Joined Thank by the you. band. Mm -hmm. Yeah, who are you playing with on this live session here? Um, it's my partner, Scott Gailey, who's also in the group You and Me with me. Um, and our friend, Aiden and Josh. Aiden on the bass and Josh on the drum. Sounds good. First time. First time, first band session. Nice. First time all playing together. Oh, yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so this new record, uh, Yellow River Blue, um, could definitely, like we said, you know, Yellow River, your home river. Um, sounds like a lot of inspiration, probably. Like, it just has a certain natural organic quality to it i don't know maybe it's because it's so instrumental this new mm -hmm. record but uh it definitely has a kind of like rolling sprawling kind of just very open feel to it and um was so. it like talk about the kind of inspiration i mean clearly there's some kind of inspiration behind the title and all that and yeah um the title yellow river blue kind of you know it plays with yellow and blue which is two pretty contrasting color elements because one represents sand, dirt, which is the Yellow River, and blue kind of represents the Pacific Northwest, the, the, the ocean, the rainforest. Um, so it's, you know, talking about me as a person having this two sides because people connect me to the Pacific Northwest sound, this kind of rainforest house, you know, organic music. But where I come from, Yellow River, it's very, it, it's, it's dirty, it's sandy, it's dry. It's not so lush at all. Yeah, very different than out here in the Northwest. Mm -hmm. It's like too extreme almost. Mm -hmm. And then so that must have been definitely an experience. You said you moved to Vancouver, BC, mm -hmm. like seven-ish years ago, you said? Yeah, for university. Yeah. Okay. For, yeah, uh, that's right. I think I was reading a CBC or something article. You went to UBC? Mm -hmm. Correct. Nice. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. And so that must have been, you spent, you know, most of your, you know, formative years in China coming to, you know, BC for university. Mm -hmm. Like the contrast must have been pretty apparent from the jump, right? Like, well, like that it experience. Was huge. Yeah. Nice. It took, did it take you a while to get used to, you know, living in BC, big city? Mm -hmm. Or did, did you, were you like, yeah, this is home? <laughs> I, I feel it. I was having such a hard time. It took me at least a few years to even to be able to speak English uh, in a comfortable way and to not fail school. And then to at the same time, you know, starting to get into music and decided to do music. Mm -hmm. And I was reading that article and said that you kind of, you know, originally got exposed to, you know, house music, dance music, electronic music, kind of while you were in university. Mm -hmm. Correct. It was the last couple of years that I went to the first party I've ever been here. Yeah. And what were those? Uh, was it like a party series or was it a specific one or was it? It was a love dancing party, which was hosted um, by members of the Mood Hut label from here. Um, and, and Floating Point was DJ. I think it was maybe his first time DJing in Vancouver. And that was my first time hearing disco house and old dance music. Mm -hmm. Floating Point's super talented. Definitely a great DJ, great musician. Definitely probably a really cool first show to experience it was definitely i think you know it can be you know it can be something totally not so good as the first party to go to so i think that was i lucked out on that one mm -hmm. definitely that's <laughs> really cool and um yeah um on your initial or your last release uh last release the roll with the punches one um, I believe that was the one before Yellow River Blue, correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was the last big EP. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, super like kind of more mellow, ambient feel on that mm -hmm. one. Um, if you listen to that one, then listen to Yellow River Blue. 
just even from the jump, it's just a lot more upbeat, a lot more kind of, you know, just like almost pop sounding, not exactly mm -hmm. pop, but like kind of just more a beat, you know, more dancey. Um, what kind of brought about that change or what kind of inspired, you know, you to go that direction? Um, Cause I work as a DJ as well. So I'm exposed to all kinds of dance music all the time. And to be honest, mm, for me to, you know, write Yellow River Blue, especially the, the few faster kind of pop songs, I only was able to do it because I felt like I was in a place that I could finally deliver, being able to deliver the kind of music I wanted to make, but I didn't have the ability, the technical ability to produce and record things. So I finally, you know, from, cause every record that I've put out, it's basically me. It's like doing homework, learning about programs, gears, synthesizers, drum machines. And so that's why every, every single record is different because I'm learning new skills and trying to record new things. And then, you know, with recording this band session, it was my first time ever playing a real band and practicing my own song, translating songs, um, you know, because everything was completely written on a computer but having every element being performed by real humans. It was a learning process too. Yeah, definitely. It's really cool. Thanks. And get into a couple more songs from Yellow River Blue that we're going to get into. Let's hear it.
KEXP, 90.3 FM, KEXP.org. Here at KEXP at home with Yusu. Just heard another track, Mela Luca from Yellow River Blue. Probably my personal favorite from that record. Thanks. Yeah, thanks for that. Um, you mentioned, you know, in the recording of the Yellow River Blue, um, learning all these new programs, synthesizers, drum machines, all that. Um, you originally were like trained in piano, I believe, right? I think mm-hmm. I read. So yeah, uh, was it mostly just piano growing up or did you play any other instruments? Mostly that, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then was it after, you know, the UBC <laughs> electronic music ex- experience that you, you know, was that when you first started trying to, you know, do something besides piano? Yeah, because it was after, you know, going to the party and then starting to listen to dance music. That was when I was like, well, I want to do this. How do I do this? What's 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 the first thing? What? Because I wasn't committed at the at the moment. Um, And I so I went into computer program because I didn't want to spend any money just to buy a bunch of synthesizers because those are expensive. The old Juno, those keyboards are really expensive. I didn't want to commit and just invest money in anything. So, you know, computer was the starting point, the program. So that's, um, that's where I started learning Ableton. And, and now everything comes from Ableton. Oh yeah. You can do anything in there. Anything. DJ, yeah. produce, sound design, all that. Yeah. And my favorite thing is to be able to make music that doesn't sound digital but with purely digital technology. I really enjoy that. Mm -hmm. Was Yellow River Blue pretty much all digital, all? Yeah, it was was because because everything was recorded almost when I was in different places. I was traveling a lot. so, So the computer was the only accessible instrument I had. So I had to use what I have to try to make something that try to make something that sounds like it's recorded in a studio or in different environments all the time. I wanted to have that narrative of having different soundscapes in every song. Mm. No, definitely the the fact that you were traveling while you were writing the album, that just like makes sense for some reason. Like that album, you listen to it front to back, it kind of sounds like you're going different places like you're you know traveling across you know large like you know planes and you know it's Mm -hmm. really everything's really spread out and you're looking out the window i don't know i could get a really like yeah you're on a long road trip or a train or something and you're looking out the window watching like the countryside or whatever go by oh totally (laughs) one of the song was written on the high speed train in china that's so great i like literally i can like hear that in some <laughs> of that album. That's great. Yeah. And um, yeah. And lastly, like this Yellow River Blue put out on this new ish label. Mm-hmm. BA. I, I think I'm saying it right. Am I yeah, saying it right? You did it right. BA. Nice. BA Records. And you're kind of one of the like main people behind it. The label. Um, yeah. The label, it's. Uh, the label involves a bunch of friends I have in Beijing. Um, and so we just decided to work together and start this new thing. So it's just a fresh start for me and for them. Very cool. Mm-hmm. Well, pretty much wraps it up, I think. Yusu, thank you for being with us today. Thank you for playing these great songs. Thank you. And yeah. KEXP, 90.3 FM, KEXP.org online, streaming 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's KEXP at home. Thanks again, you, Sue. Thanks again, all our viewers. It's Mike Ramos signing off. Thanks. See ya. Discover new music at KEXP.org.